All right. Well, what we have here is we're going to go through um, another example um, of number three. We're going to finish up. This is 2013 FRQ for the AP AB exam. Um, you can't use a calculator on this one as well. We're doing number three, and now we're on letter C. And we did a part A and B on our previous video. Now, this one is we are given the table, and whenever you see a table, chances are you're going to be probably using eventually um, a Riemann sum, um, using left, right, or midpoint, or possibly in the trapezoidal rule. And it always happens here, and guess what? Um, we come down to that problem, part C, so it says use a midpoint sum, okay? So essentially that means a Riemann sum. All right, we're asked to find the Riemann sum with three subintervals with equal length, okay? Equal length indicated by the data in the table above. All right, um, the value of this is we want to find this, the integral from 0 to 6 of C of T from 1 to 6. Using correct units, explain the meaning of this in the context of the problem. Now, um, let's first uh, think about what this equation means right here before we do this. So essentially what we're finding here is whatever value this is, okay, that we find. So one sixth of the integral from zero to six of C of T. Now, C of T, it's always important to understand what is your integrand? Is that a rate or a value? Now, how do you know if it's a rate? Well, if you look at the unit, this would be like ounces per minutes or whatnot, but it's not, it's ounces. So we're integrating an amount. And then we're dividing by one six or multiplying by one sixth. Well, where does this come from? Well, this appears to be actually the average value. Okay, the average value. All right, the average value of what? Well, it's the average value of hot water is dripping from average value of hot water that's dripping from the cup. A uh, couple of the cup is that time given by different function. The value is measured in ounces. So the hot water is dripping through a coffee maker. So the average amount of coffee. So this actually is the average amount of coffee um, dripping all right dripping into a large cup okay um, the average amount of coffee dripping into a large cup um, and it appears from zero to six minutes all right large cup from zero to six minutes. And that's actually what we're trying to find. We're finding the average amount of coffee dripping into a large cup from zero to six minutes. Okay. Um, how do we know that? Well, if you recall, an average value is we take um, the integral of a function. Okay. I'll just call function like f of x dx. We take the integral of, of a function from a to b. This will tell us all the values of this function, um, f of x from a to b. If we then take it 1 over our b minus a, all right, we are now finding the average value of this function over the interval from b to a, okay, or a to b, if you want to say it that way. So this is the average value. Okay, so that's what we're asked to find. So I actually just uh, explained the meaning of this, all right, before I did the problem. So that's what we're finding, and I'll, I'll put that in there a little bit. So now let's actually find out what this value is going to be. So to figure this out, we're going to find the values using or the integrate integral using a midpoint Riemann sum of just three equal subintervals. So if you recall Riemann sum is recounting rectangles. All right. All right. Counting rectangles. Okay. In this case we're not going to count an infinite amount of rectangles. We're just going to count three. All right. Three rectangles. So how do we know what how many rectangles we have? Well we're going to have rectangle one um, counting actually I should put area area of rectangles. So the area one of our first rectangle is going to be, well, the height, all right, times the width, okay? Now our width, if you recall, is always going to be delta x, okay? In this case, not delta x, but actually delta t. Now delta t is a change in our values. Well, since we're looking for three sum intervals and we're going from zero to six, we're going to take six minus zero divided by three, because that's n, and that's going to give us two. All right, so we're going to go for 2. So our width is going to be 2. And we're going to multiply that by, all right, our midpoint. So for the first one, we're going from 0 to 2, then 2 to 4, and then 4 to 5. 
Our height for each rectangle is going to be the middle value. So what's the middle value between 0 and 2? Well, it's going to be that one right there. So when we actually plug it in our value C of 1, it's going to be 5.3. So we're going to take 5.3 times 2. Next one we're going to add is our rectangle 2. Our rectangle 2 is going to be 2 times the middle value between 2 and 4, which in this case is going to be 11.2. All right, 11.2. Okay. And then we're going to go to our third rectangle area, and that's going to be right here. Our height is going to be 13. All right, 13.8. So we have 13.8, and then we'll multiply that by 2. Now, if you remember, notice that all these are 2, so now we just need to add all these together and multiply this. So I'm going to actually factor out a 2 and then just add 5.3 plus 11.2 plus 13.8 and see if this works out pretty well. Um, so that's going to be 24, 25, 25, and it's going to be 30.3, it appears. That's what our answer is going to be. And we'll multiply it by 2. All right. And what we should have is 60.6. So if I did that right, uh, 24. Did that do it right? Um, that's me. Oops, 24, 25, uh, 25. Yep. All right, and 33, and then 60.6. Now this is gonna be 60.6. All right, and then. We're not done yet because we have to actually find out what this is. So 6.6, .6, this is actually going to give us the approximation of the integral from 0 to 6 of C of t. And so now to find out our final answer, we're going to take 1 sixth of the integral from 0 to 6 of C of t. forgot the dt. All right, C of t dt. And that's going to equal... 60.6 um, .6 divided by 6, which is going to be 10.1. All right, 10.1. So we have 10.1 what? Well, 10.1 ounces. So 10.1 ounces, okay, is our answer. And so um, we would say this for our final thing is 10.1 um, ounces is the average amount of coffee dripping into a large cup from 0 to 6 minutes. All right, and that's what we know. All right, and that's going to be our explanation. And that's what we found. So what would you need to show for work? Well, you need to have this explanation written out, okay, like that. Put it in context, of course. Um, you then need to show your work. If you put this one sixth here and you just wrote all this, that's cool. You do have to show this part right here or this right there, and then your final answer, okay, which you have. Um, notice how I have it equaled and labeled everywhere we're going through. All right, so that's a Riemann sum using midpoint sums and a good approximation for rectangles. All right, oops, and that's going to be approximately. That's approximately, probably should be approximately. All right, and that's approximate too, okay? Because these are not the actual value. It's an approximation of what the area would equal. All right, let's continue on. And the final one, it says the amount of coffee in a cup in ounces is modeled by this. Okay, so we're going to just say this amount of coffee in the, is modeled by this one right here. So now we're given, given an equation. It says using this model, find the rate at which the coffee in the cup is changing at t equaling 5. So since we're looking for a rate, we're looking for the derivative. So we're going to take b prime of t to find our rate. Okay, that makes sense. All right, derivatives give us a rate. Um, so we take the derivative of this, which is going to cancel that out, and then we're left with negative 16. Um, we have to take the derivative of this well, so we have negative 0.4, all right, times e to the negative 0.4t power. Um, going through right here, we can simplify this, and we have negative positive, and so we have um, 64. 0.64, and then we have e to the negative 0.4 t power. We are then looking for what it is going to be the rate at 5. So we put in b prime of 5, and we just plug it into here. Okay, and so what we have right there is going to be, okay, 6.4 times e to the negative 0.4 times 5, and that's going to equal 6.4 e to the negative second. All right, negative second. Or if you were like this, 6.4, all right, 
e squared and you find the rate at which the model so what is that going to be that's going to be ounces per minute okay so at five minutes at five minutes all right um the rate at which the coffee is dripping into the coffee into the cup all right from the the coffee maker is going to be at 6.4 um over e squared ounces per minute and that's our answer you need to show this work and this work to get full credit all right well i hope that makes sense and yeah and i hope this helps you out on how to use your room on sums and how to incorporate all this using our table all right good luck and god bless on the rest of your problems